All right, guys, I'm back with another video. So over the past three days, I've had two people ask me uh, uh, what's going on with uh, mounts uh, despawning vehicles and horses and such. Uh, so today I'm going to show you why I'm going to explain it to you and I'm going to explain to you how you can uh, go about fixing that. So let's get started. First, I will demonstrate. I'm going to possess this vehicle. When I get up to the cube, it's going to be spawn. And there it goes. You'll see the character didn't uh, ignore those errors. Uh, that's just some stuff I'm ignoring for the moment. Uh, so why is it doing this? So if we select this tile that this car is on, and we go down to the top down view, you'll see that the cube I placed is right here. So if I hold my middle mouse button down from the edge of this tile to the edge of that, you'll see that's about 32,000 and it despawns right before we get there, that's 30,000. So why is it doing it at 30,000 in this case? It's because my grid loading range is 30,000. So when I get 30,000 units away from, uh, or 30,000 centimeters away from this tile, it will despawn the tile and everything that's on this, the tile that is set to be spatially loaded. So to fix that, we just select the vehicle. You see, and we go to details and click the little streaming thing here. And you'll see under world partition is spatially loaded. We're going to uncheck that. And uh, then we're going to try again. See, now it doesn't do it, which is what we wanted. Now it will never despawn. It is persistent. So obviously you're not going to want uh, hundreds or thousands of vehicles in your scene and none of them ever despawn. Uh, you're not going to want that. So how can you deal with that? Well, you would want to make an actor uh, that can spawn and despawn things for you which is what I did here. So right here, uh, I just made an actor that allows me to select one of the vehicles and uh, set a distance that I want it to despawn uh, once the, the character gets out. So uh, 30,000 would be about what it, what it is now, the length of this tile. So if I come over here and I just go into play mode, and let's hide this. And I come over here and I drive a little distance away and then I get out, it shouldn't despawn. But if I go down here past around where that thing is and let's just let it fall here and I get out, it'll despawn. Alright. So uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm ignoring that for now. So how am I doing this? I just created an actor and I'm calling this on a set timer by function name. You could also call this on event tick and then come up here to self and under actor tick, tick interval under details, you could set this to like one second or something and make sure that's checked and it'll do the same thing but I'm just going to use this. Uh, I have it set to one second and I have it looping. I don't have any initial start delays or variance in the start delay. So we'll come over here to the function I set, which is check distance. And all I'm doing is I'm getting this actor and I'm saying if the distance between this actor and the player pawn is less than this distance to check, then we will commence towards spawning. Another check I have to do is, is I have to check this spawned vehicle reference and see if the spawned vehicle reference is null or if it's been set. If it's been set, uh, then that's false and that means that the vehicle has already been spawned. If it isn't uh, 
or if it if it hasn't been set, if it's empty, uh, because this is empty when I don't set it, then if that's true, then we will spawn the vehicle at this location. And then we will, uh, using this vehicle class reference, um, then we will set that variable. Now, if they do go beyond the distance that we want, uh, and the player is not possessing that vehicle, which means that the player pawn is not equal to this vehicle reference. If those aren't the same, then they, then, uh, then they aren't possessing it. They're, they're not in the vehicle or on the mount. If they are the same, uh, that means that they're currently possessing it and we do not want to destroy it. So if, if they get out, if they get out beyond this, this distance, then it will destroy the actor. Uh, you can do a timer, set a timer here, or do another timer by uh, function name, like I did there. You can do that on a function that holds the logic that decides how and when vehicles are destroyed. That's totally up to you. So, uh, yeah, that that's one way you could uh, you could get around uh, the vehicles being persistent, uh, but it wouldn't keep them in memory. It would keep these actors in memory, so you'd want to try to get want to try to keep them as light as possible. That's why I don't have it doing it on a solid tick. Uh, you could uh, even reduce the time that it checks to every five seconds or every 10 seconds, whatever you deem appropriate for your project. And uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next video.